All right, let's talk some Joe Burrow for a second. It's an interesting situation with him, right? Uh, I mean, I definitely think with Burrow, one of the fascinating things with this whole game against the Ravens is obviously the numbers were incredible, but you do have to factor in who he was going against. He was going against, you know, even practice squad defensive backs is sometimes a bit generous for some of these guys. The flip side is these are NFL players and he's putting up 525 yards. It's not easy to do regardless. So was it just him going up against bad competition? Well, that was certainly a part of it. Like, let's start off with something like this. This is a very simple thing, but you know, this is a way that you can have success is so when you're going up against a zone coverage team, especially a team that, you know, forget about the uh, the talent and just when you're not playing with each other, it's hard to be a good zone coverage team. There's a reason why, you know, think about a team like Seattle who plays a lot of zone and their defenses always get better as the season goes on. Because just because you sort of learn the rules in your defense, you learn what the guys next to you are doing and what they can and can't do a little bit better. You get a little bit quicker at getting through your stuff. The Ravens don't play a lot of zone coverage already. They're kind of only playing zone now because they don't have the talent. And so because of it, they're not going to be great at it. So watch how, I mean, right when this play begins, you see that this is just completely wide open. I mean, this is as easy of a throw as you're going to get in the NFL. So like this did happen. This is on tape. Like you can't deny this, even if you're the biggest Joe Burrow fan in the world, that some of it was this stuff. Look, Burrow is going to make this quick throw, and they're going to pick up uh, a big gain. I think that was 19 yards right there. So that happened, and and I think that's fair. And I'm not bringing that up to discredit Burrow in any way, because like that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to hit the open guy. Like all of that stuff is good. But this was a factor, and I think we all know that. Like the chances of Burrow like throwing for 525 yards without. Uh, it being with some stuff like this are basically zero. Like, of course, this was an aspect. And also, like, there were some stuff like this where there were some legitimately impressive throws in here. It wasn't just bad defense throughout for the Ravens. I, you know, it was a lot of that, but it wasn't only that. Uh, what's going to, and of course, we all know Burrow is very good. That's no surprise. Uh, what's going to happen here is it's a cover two zone, and you have a, a route that's going to get into a gap in coverage. You can see how this could work, but there's a safety deep. So it's a dangerous throw if Burrow wants to make it. Watch how when Burrow takes the snap, you see at this point, you can see where he would want to throw it, right? Close to the sideline, not quite in the end zone, but close, right? Get it there in a hurry uh, to allow his receiver, Jamar Chase, to be able to make the grab. And look at how he is able to push it in there in a perfect way, uh, and Chase is able to get his feet down and make a great catch. I mean, that's a great throw. That's a great catch. So uh, that happened as well. Like, that was legitimately a thing. That wasn't bad defense. That was good offense that happened uh and there was also some kind of in between stuff if that makes sense let's look at a play like this now this is another example of a play where this is you know i think this is actually good zach taylor stuff zach taylor is a guy who i've criticized heavily i think he's deserved the criticism when i've criticized him i also think he deserves some praise sometimes and i thought that he had a good game plan in this one i don't know how much credit i want to give him for basically saying hey they have no secondary let's throw the ball a lot but at the same time like there's a lot of coaches in the nfl that won't do that kind of thing even though they should so uh you know at least you're you're passing uh, a low bar that some other head coaches have said. But anyways, this is just a good scheme, schematic play, I think. Uh, it's a good play call against what the Ravens are doing. So they have a single safety deep coverage, Baltimore does. Only one safety deep, and they're playing a cover three zone right here. So the safety, who I've circled in white, uh, he's going to be moving a lot further towards the top of the screen. That's where he's going, which means that towards the bottom of the screen, you have a pretty good advantage if you are uh, Cincinnati in this spot where you have three guys there. So you have a big numbers advantage where, and this is kind of why having some star receivers can really just, just help you. Jamar Chase is on the top of the screen. So, you know, to the offense's left. So the safety is going to cover over there. But now you can have three guys on the other side of the field. And now you have potentially three one-on-one -on -one matchups. Because keep in mind, the corner and then the two other Baltimore players, because there's basically uh, three guys on each side of the field. And then the seventh guy is the safety who's over the middle. So uh, it's one-on-one -on -one to the offense's right. But you also have to remember that this is zone coverage. So 
everyone is going to have to make sure they cover a guy here. However, right when this play begins, uh, you're going to see that I think this is Patrick Queen, uh, number six right there. Uh, I mean, I know it's Patrick Queen, but I, this is his fault, I believe, because you're going to see him kind of pass off a tight end right here, which you can do, right? Pass him off to the corner who's deep or maybe some safety help over the top. That's something you could do sometimes, but you have to understand your defense and you have to know, hey, a safety is, you know, crashing over towards the top of the screen so therefore i have to make sure i'm covering this guy i have to cover someone we don't have the numbers here instead he lets him go which results in you know essentially a blown coverage and you're able to get a basically a free chunk touchdown right there which that helps i mean that's obviously very good and that's going to help the numbers and all of that stuff so you know good stuff by cincinnati of using what you have to your benefit that's what a good head coach is supposed to do a quarterback is supposed to hit the open guy he made that read all of that stuff is is good it's also totally fair to say hey uh the, you know, the Ravens completely screwed that up, right? And I don't know if Kansas City is going to do that uh, this next week. So uh, that also happened. Both are true. Also, there was some stuff like this, which is interesting. So what's going to happen on this play is this is the cover to a man. Again, we're seeing a good amount of two safety deep coverages, especially after they got burned with a one safety deep coverage on that last one. They're saying, okay, let's see if we can keep stuff in front of us. And it's kind of funny, actually, that they were able to torch the Ravens, even when the Ravens were doing their best to not give up anything deep. They just didn't have the talent. Or, you know, you could also argue Cincinnati did have the talent, whatever way you want to swing it. Because this is just going to be a go route, and it's going to be in the double coverage. And, you know, man on man with a safety deep, this is double coverage. Watch. Uh, Burrow's going to take the snap, and, like, this isn't a surprising read anyways. It's not like, oh, I thought this was single coverage. It's double coverage. And it's also not like what we saw with Baker Mayfield when he threw that Packers interception where, it was double coverage, meaning someone else was open. This is man. So double coverage doesn't necessarily mean someone else is going to be open here. But Burrow fires one anyways, and this is going to somehow end up get, getting caught right there. So this is just, hey, not only is my guy better than your guy, my guy is better than both of your guys. That's pretty fun. So really good play there by Burrow on that one as well. Now, it also resulted in something like this, which eventually got called back due to penalty. But, like, this is another, like, he just throws it up there. It got intercepted. Didn't matter because it was a penalty. You know, uh, this stuff, I'm not sure if it'll work consistently. But, again, you don't always have to just, you know, trust that these things are going to, you know, unequivocally work every time. Sometimes you say, hey, we're playing the Ravens banged up secondary, so let's make the most of it. So I don't really think of it as an insult necessarily. I just think of it as a reality of the situation. And it could even be considered a compliment because he understood the assignment. And it's not like this is what he's doing, you know, his entire career or anything. Although he will trust his receivers. That's certainly, you know, a thing he'll do and for a good reason especially with the receivers he has in Cincinnati so yeah like listen I'm not trying to discredit Joe Burrow by any means with the you know oh well what about this what about that you know there's these plays that are kind of aren't really uh too great that he did it was more of just the offense beating the defense and I think that's the case because I genuinely think you watch the tape and you'll say, okay, it's not like he was just so good that he was going to beat anybody this day. Like, no, of course not. I think that anyone sort of realizes that. But it is cool to see that he still is capable of this. Like, listen, lots of teams have played really bad defenses uh, this year, not any of them have thrown for 525 yards against them. So uh, there still is that. Like, yeah, you're playing a bad defense. He also crushed him. So that's the other factor is he did what you're supposed to do and then some. So it goes both ways. Uh, and again, uh, what are you supposed to do against a bad defense? You're supposed to destroy him. That's what he did. So he deserves a lot of credit for it. He does. That, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.